Hello and welcome to the second interview here on the line drive. I'm here with Mike Connolly and um, we're going to be talking about all things softball and his experiences with it. Um, Mike, um, if you want to start off by just saying how did you get into the sport? Um, I'd always been a football player. Um, I say that loosely. I was generally the worst person on the team, but always tried a lot. Um, I ran a couple of teams probably over the course of 20 years and I come across a couple of people who posted about softball. Um, having lived in the States a couple of times, it's been something that I've like, been interested in from a distance. And um, one week, like it was a night, night time down in Bootleways, I went to an indoor session um, after being invited by Sean. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I was going, I had shoulder issues at the time. Um, so I didn't actually come back to play it probably for another year to 14, 15 months um, when I was basically diagnosed with a catastrophic leg injury. And it meant I really have to stop real contact sport, really. Um, and I was looking for something else, and it seemed to make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, um, you mentioned that injury to yourself. Do you feel like softball really helped that in terms of, like, you know, getting into sport and making sure that's, like, something, you, you know, you're doing and being active? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for me, especially mental health-wise, team sports has always been something I've enjoyed. Um, not necessarily running the teams always, but being part of a team in team sport. It's always been something I've really enjoyed. It's been a, an, an outlet for me, especially growing up. Um, so to be able to find the sport that I enjoyed so quickly was, yeah, was a really good thing for me. Yeah. Um, just in terms of your, like, first experiences, you know, playing with the sport, um, how did that, like, how did it go for you? And how did that, like, motivate you to, like, you know, keep coming back on that? Yeah, it, it was interesting because um, I, wasn't, I wasn't very good at all. Um but I also saw people who were very various levels playing all together. Um, it didn't seem like it was one of those things where you either excelled or you didn't. And it also wasn't one of those things where if you weren't the best player, there was still a space for you somewhere, um, which I enjoyed. I, I liked the coward aspect. I never, I never really played coward sports before. Uh, just, just another like a new thing to experience. Um, but it, it was the friendliness, to be honest, of it that made me come back. Um, I think if the people weren't so friendly and welcoming, um, especially the people leading all the sessions, I don't think I would have come back. Yeah. Um, so, so you've been involved in softball in Liverpool Softball League for a while now. Um, can you like describe like the journey that you've been through to where you are now and where you started? Sort of, if you can yeah, remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, what, 20, 2019 season. So I started playing indoor at the end of 2018, maybe November, October, November, because that's when I got um, my diagnosis from my leg injury. So it would have been around then. Um, trained indoor all through the off season, and then I started um, doing the outdoor training with Liverpool League, and end up um, playing for the Seagulls. Really enjoyed that. Obviously, we were based Crosby Ways at that point. Um, then for the twenty nine season, the twenty nineteen season, um, obviously Liverpool League moved to Chilwell area, um, but I also got a team in Manchester to play for, um, and I played a lot of indoor in Manchester in in the during the winter. So again, that gave me, you know, just another kind of another way to enjoy the sport and, and to experience it and to try and get a little bit better. Um, became captain in 2019 um, of of the Liverpool of the Liverpool team. I enjoyed that. Um, didn't enjoy tearing my hamstring part way through the season, but enjoyed 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 the season overall. Um, and we were fortunate to um, scrape through and win the, win, the, win the league in that one. And then, yeah, and then at the end of that season, uh, there was a bit of reshuffling in the league going on. Um, a couple of people were moving away and a couple of people wanted either a new challenge or to not have to deal with it, any challenges really with the league at that time. Um, so I was approached by a couple of people to see if I'd be interested in kind of coming on board a bit. And it basically, at, by the end of the AGM, I found myself as the chairman of the league. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned, you know, the chairman of the league and you've always had this, like, rapid rise, you know, like, you, yeah. not many often you have a couple of years, someone into the sport and then going into the chairman role. Um, I just want to ask, why why do you want to be in this role? Do you love the sport that much that, you know, you want to pursue it in, like, a, a lead role? Um, yes, I know, to be honest. Um, it's partly due to the, there didn't seem to be anyone else willing to do it. And I also thought that, because I've been on league committees before, running football leagues, um, I ran a club that had three teams before. So to run a league that has four or five teams isn't a massive stretch for like logistically wise. Um, I've always been quite good with logistics and just organising stuff. So that 
in my head, it, it was one of those, okay, I don't mind doing that. Um, as I said, there didn't seem to be a lot of people who wanted to do the role. And for me, even if there was a kind of drop off for a couple of months where someone wasn't looking after the league, that could have been to the detriment of the league. And I wanted to make sure that that wasn't happening as well. Um, it was something that I've enjoyed a lot. And now for, for the 2019 season, I brought down about four people and they brought down about another four people. So it was also something that I'm going, okay, well, I'm promoting this to people. I've got to actively step into that role if it needs to be. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my, my thought process behind it. Um, sometimes you just need to step up to the plate, um, literally and metaphorically. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Um, just like we, we did speak um, late, um, I think it was late, the autumn, late autumn last year about um, how COVID has affected, you know, the softball and Liverpool. Um, just yeah. I want to get your idea about since then because obviously we we're, we're nearly well we had we had, we had the first session last week of like you know. COVID softball, if you were, um, can you just explain how, what the process has been in that and, and you know, like how that's been for you and, and been for everyone involved? Yeah, I think every league's been a bit different. Every league's dealt with it in a different way. Um, obviously, a lot of it was dependent on Sports England and our own governing bodies, making sure that the return to play was A, correct and B, practical for people. Um, I've noticed over the course of 2020 and early 2021, a lot of people have left the sport or decided they're going to just play in one league or they're going to reduce the amount that they're playing because um, people's priorities change anyway through life. But some of those changes may have happened anyway. Um, some of them have definitely been inspired kind of by the year off break. Um, but I think for us, we managed to get a lot of little pickup games, um, a lot of group hits um, within COVID guidelines over um, 2020. Uh, which held us in quite good stead. We got a lot of um, people who didn't have that much experience who were rookies the previous year, and actually quite a few rookies as well um, coming to these sessions. So at our rookie session, uh, the rookie part of our session on Monday, we actually had, I think, six or seven either brand new people or relatively new people um, in that part of the session. We had about another 18 people um, who were more experienced playing on the other side, but that actually included one rookie as well, who was just a bit more confident than the others. Um, but obviously we have guidelines that we need to make sure that was um, aligned to. We need, we need to make sure we, everyone's registered to come down. Uh, we have the QR codes in case people turn up and aren't registered online. They can just scan and log on there instead. Um, make sure that, you know, they, I, I worked on the equipment afterwards kind of thing. It's just doing little tick box exercises some of the time. But if it means that the players, the families and the friends and stuff are a bit more safe, then it's always, always going to be worth it. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously it's been tough for everyone involved in this in, in this time. And do you feel like just getting back to the sport has really helped, like, you know, everyone's mood and all that and, like, just seeing everyone again, in, you know, in a softball environment? Yeah, it was great. It was great to see people on Monday. Um, it, it really was. Um, some of the rookies just came down and they just had a big smile on their face. It was the first time they played sport in two years almost. And, it's uh, yeah, it was great for them. Um, it was great to see, you know, some of the older, um, not older per se, but, more established players um, coming back, having a laugh, having a joke with people that they probably haven't seen for a year plus. Um, again, some of us have seen each other for hits and little pickup games over the course of 2020, but even then, we haven't generally seen them a lot. Um, obviously, there's, there's been no socialising really has it for a year. Um, so, it, yeah, it was really good. It's great to just see people having a swing, having a throw, and doing it with a smile on their face when they haven't been able to get down, especially to our ground for 18 months, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, just in terms of like the league and the plans for uh, 2021, um, obviously, you know, th we should be should be out, you know, Touchwood should be out of this like COVID era soon enough. Um, I just want to get an idea of your plans for, you know, the summer and, um, you know, just ju just the season ahead. Yeah, in this season, we've, we've, our plan is to treat it like a normal season. Uh, so therefore, we'll have outdoor training for four or five weeks. Um, at that point, obviously, people can come, rookies can work on their own skill sets and, and join in little the kind of scrimmage games, while more established players may work on more complicated drills and just refine skills, especially these are skills that haven't, again, haven't been used for the best part of two years, especially outdoor. So it's just training for now. Um, there'll be another four weeks or so of it. And then we'll have a captain's meeting where we'll try and sort out the teams going forward. Hopefully by then we have a better number of how many people we can expect 
obviously we have a number of people who come from Manchester ways and Southport and a little bit of a different distance who may not come down for the training sessions per se, but want to be involved in the games. And that's also great. So we want to make sure that they're involved in our thinking going forward. We can work out how many teams we've got, make sure that there's not one team who's GB level and the rest and rookies. We, you know, we want to make sure that everyone's on an even playing field going forwards for this season. Um, and then potentially look at maybe altering that going forwards. But for this season, we want to make sure that we have a fun, competitive league, but also one that where people are allowed to develop through it and through the games that they play. Yeah, yeah, very good. And um, just finally, um, just on the actual, you know, for the future as well for the league, because obviously, you know, you, you obviously focus on the short term and just getting back playing, getting the league going. Just in terms of like the league, you know, in a few years' time, are you looking to really build maybe another another team there? Because obviously a team's been lost in the last few years because of players, and now you want to try and get back to that fifth pop probably more likely sixth team just so it's an even playing field yeah definitely well um before covid hit and obviously the world changed and uh, we actually already had a new team coming in uh, based via the liverpool trojans baseball team they've got their own kits they've got everything and um, so they they have a team that will be entering this year because they've already basically already got a roster full uh, so there will be a trojans team uh the question of will all four other teams come back is up in the air at the moment. It all depends on the numbers that return and the new players that come in. Um, I'm hopeful that we can still get a five-team league out this year. It may be four for one year. Um, again, I don't know at this point um, is the honest answer. But long term, um, a couple of us have spoken about this recently and Liverpool's always been a development league. Um, it's all, almost always felt like a feeder league to Manchester to a degree. Um, and we think that maybe it's time that we treat Liverpool League as a, as a standalone league, um, a league where people can come and play and it can be competitive, uh, where you can build up a team. So whilst obviously we want the teams to be even and as even as possible and new players in would be dealt with that way, people will be able to retain players without losing players every year. And previously, teams who've won the league a couple of years on the run have almost been decimated by having other players go out to other teams to try and even them out a bit. And whilst... That's great for parity in the league. It doesn't isn't great for relationships on the field. It also isn't great for team building. It's it, or or trust in the process because you've got to think if you win the league with a team, you don't then want to wonder will will I be playing for them next year because I might need to go to even something else. So we're going to put that a bit more on the teams to try and um, a recruit players, but also to um, keep players. And as I say, as new players come in. Um, they'll be given out as, on a kind of a basis. If one team needs like a guy player who's played for four years, then and one comes in, they get that guy over the top league in the team. It would be on on merit. Also, obviously, if there was ever like we expanded back to six teams, for example, if we did that, then there would have to be some thought into do some people move around, and those kind of things would happen in any kind of situation like that. Um, there's also the thought of looking into can we make where the Trojans play baseball, can we make that a home for Northwest baseball and softball? Uh, we've got preliminary drawings in place uh, where we're looking to build two diamonds at the back of the, their fields. Um, we've got a couple of people working on effectively um, bids for grants, which will go some way to making that happen. It'll be a process. It won't be a we turn up on day one and we have two spa sparkly new diamonds and everything's calling it off and we've got stories and stuff like that. It'll be a process and it may take a few years to, to be honest, to start that process. But the idea is that the plan, to be honest, the, the whole plan is that these are the, these will be the best diamonds outside of Farnham Park. These will be diamonds where people who play in Manchester normally go, you know what? I think I want to play in Liverpool as well. Look at those diamonds. People will want to play here. Um, we want to make it attractive. Again, we don't want to take away from the fact that anyone can come and play. We don't want to take away the, from the developmental aspect of the league because that is key to it. It is key that people can come in and develop as players. But personal experience, I learned way more from playing a game, even playing poorly, than I did from three or four weeks training. Um, my tip to rookies always is don't try and learn everything in a week. Try and think of one thing every time you play that you can take away. I think it was you, to be honest, that said that to me when I started playing. Just try and focus on one thing. 
if it's attacking a ball, if it's just swing, it, whatever it is, it's around. just try and remember one thing or one new rule that you didn't know. Because eventually, that comes like a little bit of a bank. Rely on that information rather than trying to take everything in all at once and then the week later not having a clue what's going on. At least if you can build up some knowledge over time, you're more likely to retain it. And that's what we want to do. We've got loads of rookies, so many rookies. And the great thing is, I would say about 80% of them are women. Where we've struggled for uh, women players in the past. Um, obviously, we were six and four instead of a five and five league two years back. I don't think that'll be the case this year. Um, there may be rookies on every team, but I don't think that'll be the case because I do think we've got a lot of women okay, coming in, right. a lot so, of very enthusiastic yeah. women. We've got women coming from Manchester to play. You want Norris to play that in the Manchester you leagues? You've, you've messaged me over last year and, and month and weeks saying we want to come and play in Liverpool as well. So it is growing. Um, I want to see it personally to the point where it's yeah, eight okay. teams over the three diamonds, um, of course, maybe even two nights in, in Liverpool, and we have like two two little leagues of four. That for me makes sense. You can even we can even then go to a proper model where we have playoffs. If you know if it gets to something like that, um, again, this is years down the line, uh, but think long, medium, um, short-term goals. If you've got them all in place, at least we know what we're working towards and, and which direction we're moving. Yeah, that's very, very well put as well. Um, I want to thank you for coming on for this um, interview and um, all the best for the future and for the Bill Softball as well. Thank you very no much. Problem, thanks.